I'm starting here with the node starter, which is generated using Stripe CLI's sample command. If you need help getting this set up, see our video linked in the description on the node starter video in this channel. So in order to integrate the payment element, we're going to need to create two resources on our backend. First, we're going to need a route handler so that we can retrieve our publishable key. And we need the publishable key so that we can initialize Stripe.js on the front end. We're also going to need a client secret and we're going to use the client secret so that we can initialize the payment element. I'm going to start by adding a new route handler. And this route handler is going to allow us to get our publishable key. We'll call route publishable key and we'll just return our publishable key. Next, we're going to create a route to create a payment intent and return its client secret. We'll just call this secret. And because I'm using the Stripe VS Code extension, I can type in payment intent and I'll see a list of options for commands that I can run against the payment intents API and the code that you need to do them. So in my case, I want to create a payment intent. I'm going to change the currency to euro and I'm going to update this function to be asynchronous. And finally, I'm just going to make sure that we return our client secret from the payment intent. Okay, that completes our back end. We have everything we need. We have a home page that the node starter comes with, and that's just going to be where our checkout form lives. We have a complete page. That's where the payment element is going to redirect to after a successful payment. We have an endpoint to retrieve our publishable T, and we also have an endpoint to create a payment intent and then return its client secret. Next, let's hop into the front end so that we can actually do the work of integrating the payment element. Let's build out our front end. So you'll see that we have a really basic page here. It's a form. It doesn't have any inputs. Instead, we're going to mount the payment element. And it also has a single button. We're going to add an event listener so that when you click that button, it passes the payment method information that's inside of the payment element and sends it to Stripe. So let's get started. We've navigated back to VS Code. We're in index.html. This is the HTML file of the page you just saw. It has Stripe.js. It has a really basic form. This is pretty much all we're going to be working with. This form, this payment element div, and this button. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put all of our JavaScript in this uh, script element. We are just going to add an event listener and we're going to wait for the DOM content to have loaded. Now, after the DOM content has loaded, what we'll want to do is first fetch the publishable key. And the reason we want to do that is so that we can initialize Stripe.js. So we'll use that publishable key endpoint that we created. And then once we have the publishable key, we're able to initialize Stripe. We'll do that second. Third, we're going to need our client secret. So we're going to fetch the client secret. And the reason we're going to do that is because the client secret is required to create the payment element. So we're going to just reuse the code we have here and make some small adjustments. We want the client secret. We want to use the secret endpoint. We want to use the post method. And then fourth, we want to create and mount the payment element. First, we're going to make an instance of elements. So we'll do stripe.elements. And then we're going to create a payment element specifically using element.create, specify the element type, and pass in the client secret. As our last step, we're going to mount the payment element, calling payment element mounts, and then just passing in the ID of the element that we want to mount to. So in that case, it's payment element for us this empty div right here. Now, this should be enough for us to at least see the payment element on our page. So let's navigate back and take a look. So right now it's empty. And when we refresh, we should see it. And we have a basic card element. It hasn't been styled yet, but this is a fully functional element. Well, it almost is a fully functional element. We haven't added an event listener to the pay button yet, so we can fill out all of the form inputs here, but it won't send any payment information to Stripe. So let's do that as our fifth and last step for our base build out. Step number five, we are going to add an event listener and submit payment information to Stripe. Tokenized, of course, the, uh, the element tokenizes it. Let's start by getting the form and we can do that by using the query selector. We are going to get 
the payment form. Now, once we have the payment form, we can add an event listener and we'll listen for submit. And we're going to prevent the default behavior. And instead, what we'll do is we'll call stripe dot confirm payment. And we're going to pass in this object. We're going to pass in the element and that's going to be the payment element. And we're also going to pass in the confirm params. And within the confirm params, we're going to pass in a return URL. And a return URL is just going to be uh, complete because we, create, we created a route handler for complete. And we have a really basic thank you page. After customer completes the payment form, they'll be redirected there and they'll get a nice little thank you message. We have our event listener. We have our event listener on the submit button. We are going to confirm the card payment when someone completes the form and then clicks the button. So let's give it a whirl. If we type in the 4242 test card, we should be able to successfully complete this payment and get redirected and it works. Now, if you just want to integrate with cards, you are done. But of course, the benefit of the payment element is that it allows you to integrate multiple payment methods at once with a single integration. So for this next step, let's see how we can integrate multiple payment methods. I'm going to show you two ways. One, the manual way and the other, the automatic way using the dashboard payment method settings. So let's get started. We're going to start by going back to our server.js file and where we were creating the payment intent, we're just going to add in a new payment method. So we'll add in SEPA debit. And because we're making a change to our server, we're going to want to stop it and then restart it. We're creating a payment intent that has uh, payment method types for car and SEPA debit. And if we go back to our page, we we'll just go back to the home page. We'll see that it's rendering the card element, but it's also rendering a SEPA debit element as well. And you'll notice that it's collecting the IBAN, the email, the name. It's even showing the mandate that you're required to show. Um, if you start typing in an address, it'll also add in additional uh, information to collect the address. So this is a complete SEPA debit payment. And if we want it, we could go back into server.js and we can add in more payment methods. But there is an even easier way to go about adding and integrating payment methods with the payment element. You can actually use the dashboard. So if we go back into our server.js file and we remove this payment method types parameter here and instead use automatic payment methods enabled and set it to true, we can control which payment methods show up in the payment element using the dashboard. So let's save that and we'll just restart our server because we've made a change. Now, if we navigate back to the payment sheet, well, our payment, our checkout form rather, we do a quick refresh here we'll see that it is showing multiple different payment methods. And the reason is that I have added multiple payment methods in the dashboard. So let me show you how you can change what's rendered here. So if you go to your dashboard, you go to settings, you go to payment methods. Okay, so now I'm currently inside of the payment method settings. Now, if I look around here, I have the ability to control all of the different payment methods using just a click of a button. So in my case, we saw all of these bank redirects because I had them turned on. But if I wanted to, I could turn them all off or I could additionally turn on SEPA debit. So let's see, um, I'll turn on SEPA debit. And because SEPA debit is a delayed notification payment method, uh, I get a modal that just lets me know that it's important to set webhooks and set up webhooks so that I can so I can properly handle the payment because SEPA payments take multiple days or they can take multiple days to clear and webhooks are how you how your backend will be able to know when the payment clears or whether it failed and handle it. So if you're interested in learning more about how to handle webhooks, how to use webhooks, we have a video that we'll leave in the description of this video. Definitely check it out if you're interested in turning on any delayed notification payment methods. 
But in my case, I'm going to request access because I want to see SEPA debit. And I'm just going to turn off all of the bank redirects. Maybe I'll turn on EPS. Okay, so based on my settings, I should see a card, I should see EPS, and I should see SEPA debit when I refresh my checkout. So let's go ahead and refresh the checkout. All right, and that's exactly what we get. We get the card, we get EPS, we get SEPA debit, and using the automatic payment methods parameter allows us to integrate payment methods fully integrated payment methods with all the information you need, including mandates, just by changing the payment method settings in the dashboard.